much. We may be seated. Jesus began to teach them and told them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the priests, the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke clearly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, and then he said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You do not have in mind the things of God, but rather the things of men. He called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? If anyone has, is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, then the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. This is the word from the Lord in the house of the Lord. Things change a lot. Some things change only a little bit. You've probably been sitting here, as I did when I first saw them not too long ago. The banners up front, they're new. They're a little different, and they're pretty slick. And we thank Janet for ramrodding the whole project and get them done. They are beautiful. They bring us to the point that Abraham was told by God at 99, I'm going to make you the father of nations. And he didn't believe it. He told Sarah, I'm going to make you a mother at 100. And she laughed. (laughs) I think most of us would have cried. (laughs) God brings us things that are hard to believe. He brings us messages that are are really hard to assimilate, hard hard to get a grasp of. And Jesus has been with his associates, his apostles, for all these years. And then he finally sits them down and says, look, they're going to kill me. And in three days, I'll come back. And Peter said, I don't want to hear that. Well, haven't haven't we all had that attitude? I've got some news for I just put tires on a car. And he had news for me that I didn't want to hear. And that was pretty minor compared to the transmission or the engine block or whatever else might go wrong. There's always words in our life, there's always places in our life where we hear things, we don't want to believe it. But it's real. And Jesus finally had to convince his apostles, and he only did it after he was dead and raised, that these things were planned from the beginning. It was no accident that Christ found punishment, horrendous punishment, and an, un, an awful death. It was necessary. I hate to say it, but you and I caused it. Well, not back then, but we're still working on the cause. And we don't want to hear that either. What he expected of Peter was to listen and hear what he had to say so that he could convince him that this was God's plan. And, and in our lives, we see so many instances of, of things that happen that are almost inexplicable, but the timing is such that you can't do anything but shake your head and say, thank you, God. Right, Nancy? It's amazing. We then put it, we give it uh, the the blame or the credit for it to coincidence or, boy, wasn't that a nice stroke of fate? No. God has a plan. God had a plan in the beginning. Obviously, if you read the Old Testament, his original plan wasn't quite up to snuff for a God. I mean, he, he created this wonderful creation and he, he put animals and critters in it and then he created man. He blew, it, blew his plan all to pieces when he brought us into the equation. And we're still the ones 
We're still the ones that, don't, that make this world less than ideal. Because we do things that we shouldn't. We create situations that we shouldn't. And he loves us anyway. And when we, when we mess up, he already forgave us. I mean, he doesn't, he doesn't really know where we're going to mess up. He just knows we're going to. So he, we, get, we get blanket amnesty only because Christ did face horrendous treatment, horrendous torture, an awful death in order to provide the blood sacrifice that would wash away our sins. It used to be they killed an animal and they bled the animal and they put it over the altar and then they burned the body of the animal and that took away their sins for a year. Then they had to start over again. But, you know, they're like most of us. They, after they got cleansed, they went right back to sinning because we've got to have something to do next year. But we're a, we're a strange lot, and we do trace our beginnings back to Abraham because Isaac was the beginning of the Jewish traditions. Ishmael, the be- beginning of of the Muslim traditions. The Christian Christianity came about when those who came later believed in Christ. But Jesus was from the line of Abraham. So all of this was planned. All of this was in place. And all Christ asked of Peter, understand. Try to understand. Don't tell me what you want. Listen to what I have to say to you. And that message to each one of us this day is, is exactly as clear and as plain as when he spoke to Peter. Try to understand what I expect of you. Try to understand what is necessary for my kingdom here on earth. Try. That little three-letter word is, is what it takes to make us one with the Christ who loved us enough to die for us. He expects us to try. Oh, he expects us to fail. But once in a while, he expects us to succeed. But we'll never succeed if we quit trying. You saw the the skier from Hungary, the lady from Hungary. No, she was from here, but her grandmother was Hungarian. So she skied for the Hungarian team, and she did the half pipe, and she went down and down and down and down and out the end. And that was it. And everybody else is 40 feet in the air and doing triple flips. And and she did not apologize one bit for what she did. She said, I did what I could. She tried. And that's what Christ expects of us. He doesn't expect every one of us to do a triple somersault. He doesn't expect every one of us to do wonders. But he expects every one of us to love a little bit. And that's all it takes is to try to love a little bit. And the first thing you know, you love a lot. But you never do it without trying. And Peter said, don't tell me about that. I don't want to hear it. I just don't want to hear that. I've heard that at my house. No, I think I said that at my house. (laughs) I knew it was somewhere. But... All Jesus asked of his disciples was hear what I have to say. Listen for my message. Try. Just simply try. Amen. Victory in Jesus, number 370.